بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم We continue our study of Hadith 35 about knowing names of God and the issue of Jabra and Tafid Determinism or Predestination and Delegation uh, This is inshallah our last session on this Hadith uh, The Hadith as you remember was from Imam Rida alayhi salam and it was a hadith of Qudsi Imam Rida alayhi salam said Qala Allah yabna Adam Allah said O son of Adam bimashiati kunta anta alladhi tasha'u linafsika ma tasha with my will you have become what you have become that you want for, enough for yourself what you want وَبِقُوَّتِي أَدَّيْتُ فَرَائِذِي أَدَّيْتَ فَرَائِذِي With my power you have delivered and performed your wajibat which I have obligated upon you وَبِنِعْمَتِي قَوَيْتَ عَلَى مَعْسِيَتِي With my blessing you have become capable of sinning and disobeying me جَعَلْتُكَ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا قَوِيًّا I have made you able to hear, to see, powerful. ما أصابك من حسنة فمن الله وما أصابك من سيئة فمن نفسك. Whatever comes to you from good is from God. Whatever comes to you from bad is from yourself. So, وذلك إني أولى بحسناتك منك وأنت أولى بسيئاتك مني. You have more role in your hasanat although there is no tafid Allah has role every person has role but when it comes to bad things you have more role when it comes to good things I have more role I don't know if I maybe miss uh, uh, you know read or I don't know in any case the idea is this I am awla bil hasanat mink if you do salat, if you do charity, if you help, etc., you have role. But I am awla. My role is more. But anta awla minni. But if you have bad actions, your role is more. You are more responsible. I am not asked about what I do, but others are asked. We explain this hadith, we explain some points. Now, uh, only two chapters, uh, short chapters are remaining. One is about Jabr and Tafrid. Uh, those who studied Kalam Aqaid before, you are familiar with this issue. But if someone is new, basically among Muslim theologians, there were two opinions which were very much in opposition to each other some believed in Jabra means everything is decided by God everything is done by God is according to some people everything is action of God we have no really free will this is one view another view is opposite to that that is saying that everything is delegated to human being tafid means in our actions Everything is to us. Allah has no role. He has left everything to us. But the Shia have had the idea that لا جبر ولا تفيض بل أمر بين أمرين Neither Jabr nor Tafiz, something in between. So it's not that Allah has left everything to us and he has no role at all. And it's not that we are not responsible. He has a role but we are still responsible. And we can make changes. We have been given free will. 
So we want to discuss this. So Imam Khomeini says this hadith very clearly refers to the issue of Jab and Tafid and expresses the idea of Amrun Bain Amran, a status between two status. And this is something that people of Ma'rifa and people of heart means uh, not only philosophers and theologians but also mystics would accept. On the one hand it says that the servant, the human being has some role but also it says that Allah has a role. He says you have Mashiach but your Mashiach is under my Mashiach. You brought Fara'a'id obligation but under my power or because of my ni'mah you are able to commit sin. So it means that Allah has a role, you have also role and you cannot put all the responsibility on Allah or you cannot say Allah has no role at all. In other words, your Mashiach is a manifestation of Allah's Mashiach as your existence is an, a manifestation of Allah's existence your Mashiach your power your irada your life everything is a manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has those qualities those perfections that exist in manifestation the real one Adhahir not al-madhar madhar is manifestation al-zahir the one who has by himself this appearance like in wujud allah is wajibul wujud bizat but all the contingent beings are signs manifestations of him but he has these qualities in the first place and in an absolute way without limit without any restriction Then a question may come that if Allah has a role, then what about the bad things that happen by us? So he has also some role in bad things or you know deficiencies that we have. What is the answer? The answer is that آنچه از خیرات و کمالات و حسنات است از حق است anything from خیرات good things کمالات perfections حسنات beautiful things beautiful, beautiful actions everything like this comes from him any deficiency please remember this any deficiency any problem is because of two things because of hudud and ta'ayyun hudud means limits we receive existence from Allah but when this is coming to our mahiyya which is very limited problems happen the good things are because of existence but bad things are because of the limits that we have or ta'ayyun Allah is unlimited is absolute but when it comes down takes the shape and form of those borders those limits imagine for example if we have unlimited paper absolute paper no limit but then you with a scissor cut for example something like triangle a square circle etc what is this triangle or this square is paper but it's a limited paper is a paper that has borders but the paper itself is the same as absolute paper the only problem is that this has limits it comes from that but it has limits so this is the issue that we have to remember anche naqs o razile o sharr o wabal ast 
whatever from deficiency vices evil burden are there be adam wa ta'ayyun raja they all go back to two things lacking and being defined narrowly not being absolute و از لوازم ماهیت است as requirement and implication of mahiyya because mahiyyat are always limited what makes us different from each other is not what we share what we makes what makes us different from each other is those limits that we have So this is why Allah says ma asabaka min hasanatin fa min Allah wa ma asabaka min sayyiatin fa min nafsi hasanat comes from above from Allah sayyiat or lack of those hasanat because limits that we have because of the borders that are there Then he says what is famous there's a famous saying that they say saada and shaqawa happiness felicity saada or shaqawa opposite to that to have miserable situation some people have said these are not things that are for example decided by god coming from god because they are not made ja'al of ja'il does not belong to them it's not that a cause is making them But he says, no, this is not correct. Sa'ada comes from God and Shaqawa comes from the contingent being. Every contingent being by essence is nothing. Um, some of you maybe studied philosophy, you know, or listened to the lectures, you know, over there I mentioned there is a famous rule in Islamic philosophy they say al-mahiyyatu or al-mumkinu min haqqihi if it's mumkin it becomes haqqihi an yakuna lays wa min illatihi an yakuna ais means mumkinu al-wujud contingent being if it's left to his own essence it doesn't come to existence it is because of originating cause that it comes to existence it is true that mahiya has equal relation to existence and non-existence yes mutasawa nisba ila al-wujud wal but because it's mutasawa nisba ila al-wujud wal adam it doesn't mean that wujud and adam have the same relation with Mahi. It means that if there is wujud comes from above, if there is Adam, this Adam is because of himself or his herself or itself when there is no wujud coming from above. This is why philosophers say Adam al Illah illatun la Adam al Ma'lul non-existence of the cause is the cause for non-existence non-existence of the cause is the cause for non-existence why because from itself doesn't have any reason to exist doesn't have any principle for existence so saada is coming from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore the famous hadith that as saeedu saeedun fi batna umme wa shaqiyu shaqiyun fi batna umme has to be understood not in the way that some people have suggested they said saada and shaqawa are decided already when someone is the stomach of the mother they are decided in advance we say no this is not the meaning and he says this refers to ilm asma u sifat it's a matter of allah's attributes and knowledge about allah's attributes allah knows in advance 
even someone who is not yet born, who is going to be Sa'id, who is going to be Shaqi, but it doesn't mean that it is predestined, it's decided in eternity so that you cannot change it. Then there is another problem that he wants to answer and that is about the issue of awlawiyya anna awla bika minka or awla bi hasanatika minka anta awla bi sayyatika minni the is issue of awlawiyya he explains and he says that because both have roles there is no tafis there is no jabra so it means Allah has a role the person himself has a role but which one's role is greater for doing good Allah's role is greater for doing bad <laughs> our role is greater in the sense that we are more responsible the next issue is what we have in the Quran, which is very important, in Surah Nisa, verse 78, Allah says, Qul kullun min indallah. Everything is from God. But in verse 79, says, Ma asabaka min hasanatan fa min Allah, wa ma asabaka min sayyatan fa min nafsik. So one ayah says, Kullun min indallah. Everything is from God. The other one says, if something good comes, it's from God. If something bad comes, it's from yourself. Is there any contradiction? No. Sometimes we are co uh, focusing, concentrating on the fact that everything that happens, everything that exists comes from God. Sometimes we are thinking about the balance between us and our Creator. And we want to say that we have also some role. So, when he says, Ma asabaka min hasanatan min Allah, wa ma asabaka min sayyidan min nafsik, this is one perspective. When he says, Kullun min indallah, it's another perspective. Existence comes from Allah, limits come from us. So, in any sense, uh, any, in one sense, we can say everything comes from Him. We just limit it. Or we can say, Hasanat are from Him, Sayyat are from us. Another chapter is about the fact that Allah is not questioned about what he does and other beings are questioned. He says, this is a very important sentence and some of you again who have studied philosophy remember this, about illatagha'i and illatafa'ili being the same in wajibul wujud. Let me first read for you what he says. Dar بیان آن که حق تعالی سوال نشود از آن چه بکند و دیگر موجودات سوال شوند This chapter is about the fact that Allah is not questioned about what he does and other beings are questioned بدان که محققین از, فل... از فلاسفه گویند Those philosophers who are محقق They are very deep and you know very great scholars They say از برای فعل مطلق حق قایت و غرزی جز ذات مقدس و تجلیات ذاتی او نیست For Allah's actions there is no need for any purpose other than his essence and manifestations of his essence What does it mean? It means we don't need to look for some reason outside his essence This finally reaches a very very uh, delicate issue they say in wajibul wujud illat fa'ili and illat ghai are the same why he does things for his own essence for his own essence if someone is not uh, trained philosophically may think this is selfishness he does everything for himself no na'uzu billah this is not selfishness all the good things that come from him are because of his love for his essence. 
even his mercy, his manifestations of mercy, all are because of himself. Showing generosity also is because of himself. Making us able to perfect is because of himself. In what sense? In the sense that he has nothing outside his essence to consider. Number one. Is there anything outside his essence to consider? Anything is his essence and what comes from his essence. There is nothing independent from his essence. Number two. If there were something other than his essence that were motivating him were the reason for action then wouldn't he be then influenced wajibul wujud should not be influenced by anything there is nothing outside to influence him so if you really carefully think about this issue you would understand that if he has created anything, if he has given blessings to anything, if he forgives, etc., it's all because of his essence. But in this sense that it means that he doesn't need any additional reason, additional pressure, additional motivation. You can say he does these things naturally he does this thing out of his own essence i told you about for example when sometimes there's a question about aim for creation i say why sugar is sh uh, you know sweet why salt is salty do you need a reason outside and outside the essence of salt or sugar no why a teacher who loves teaching teaches because of his love for teaching doesn't need any extra reason you don't need to say because he's paid for example or he's praised that, that if he loves teaching he would teach so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does things because of himself there is uh, an ayah in the Quran which says لَوْ أَرَدْنَا أَن نَتَّخِذَ لَهْوًا لَتَّخَذْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا إِنْ كُنَّا فَاعِلِينَ If we were going to take something for amusement, for entertainment, if we were going to entertain ourselves by doing something which is not serious, you know to have a kind of play or you know kind of game you know playing with a toy there was no need to create anything so that we play with it <laughs> if we wanted to entertain ourselves if we wanted because he doesn't need to entertain it, but if we were supposing we would have done it internally we would have taken something from ourselves to, to entertain us he doesn't need he's not like a person who makes a toy to play with and without this toy would feel bored for example or sad no the best thing to give him pleasure the best thing to enjoy is his own essence so out of his love for perfection that exists in him for the absolute perfection that exists in him or he is actually that ab he does things and of course he also considers our need he's generous to us but it all goes back to that uh, some people find it very difficult to absorb this point that I'm going to mention but I hope inshallah you understand if you don't understand either forget it or ask me again why Allah loves us is his love selfish no 
when I have selfish love for something, I want to possess it, I want to own it, I want to benefit, I don't want others benefit from. It's all a matter of my ego. And only a needy person can have selfish love. The real love is not selfish. The real love is not possessive. The real love is to be possessed. We discussed this in some discussions about love. So why Allah loves me? Is he selfish? No. Does he want to benefit from this? No. Does he want others not to benefit? No. It's not selfish. But is his love for us independent from his love for his essence? No. Because other than his essence, nothing exists. Because he loves absolute perfection, he loves also manifestations of that absolute perfection. So in a sense, he loves us because or as an implication of his love for the absolute perfection that he is. And this is a great honor, if you really understand, it's a great honor that we are loved by him because he loves himself. If I feel that I am loved by my father, if I really love my father, and I know that he loves me as part of himself or someone who belongs to him. I, I feel very honored. Or if, or if I have a great teacher and I think my teacher loves me not as independent, but as someone that he feels is part of him, part of his soul, part of his, I don't know, perfection, part of his achievements are in me. That's great honor. So Alhamdulillah, not only we are coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only we are going back to Him, but we are somehow in Him. But this in is not like an object being in another object. In the sense that we are with Him, we are not separate from Him, we are associated to Him. We are, we belong to him. We are not separate, we are not far. As Amir al Mumin said, Dakhilun fil ashya la bil mumazajah. Allah is with everything inside them, but not by being mixed with them. So he's not mixed with us, there's no physical relation, but he is in us, and we are, in a sense, in him. So, for this reason, there is no uh, you know, need for asking him why you do things. He doesn't need any external motivation. So, this is the main point in the last chapter here, and he has mentioned this in different ways by saying that everything originates from him, everything is because of his essence, etc. that I think we have uh, inshallah explained the main point and maybe just I read two lines which is interesting he says چون ذات مقدسش کامل مطلق و جمیل علل اطلاق است because his holy essence his sacred essence is Kamil mutlaq Absolutely perfect Wa jameel ala latlaq Absolutely beautiful So because he's absolutely perfect Absolutely beautiful Therefore his essence is Ka'abiyya Amal hameyya mawjudat All beings Their Ideals Are this Ka'abi Ka'abi is for Hujjaj. All the Hujjaj go towards Kaaba. Amin al-Bayt al-Haram. Amin with Shidda means Qasidin. 
everyone is making intention of going to Kaaba. All the beings, their ultimate end is Allah because He's absolutely perfect, absolutely beautiful. So He is Kaabiya Amal, means all our dreams and all our wishes, all our desires, all our ideals, ends are attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. کعبه آمال همه موجودات و قایت مقصد جمیع سلسله the ultimate end of all this you know, chain of beings but کعبه itself doesn't have another کعبه Allah himself doesn't need to have another end another you know, ideal he is the ultimate end and he doesn't need anything else outside himself to motivate him so he doesn't have any end he is for himself the end so this is one also meaning of okay alhamdulillah we finished hadith 35 and inshallah next week we start hadith 36 which is Sifat haq about sifat haq, about some of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way we should understand his attribute especially it's about ilm about the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the power of Allah and sam and basar the fact that he hears and he sees alhamdulillah rabbil alameen